the top Democrat on the House Select Intelligence Committee says U.S. actions in Libya protected America's national security as well as security worldwide. But Maryland Representative Dutch Ruppersberger still, Ruppersberger, sorry, still has plenty of security concerns like what happens now to Muammar Gaddafi's weapons of mass destruction? The congressman joins us from Baltimore. Thank you so much to read something from your statement, Congressman, that caught our attention. Um, sure. You said we must also ensure radical extremist groups do not take control of the country. Libya has a large stockpile of chemical weapons and explosives that must not fall into the wrong hands. Now, I have to tell you that I uh, spoke with uh, two people recently who said, what chemical weapons? He handed them over. The man's fired two scuds in four months. He just doesn't have them. Do we know for sure there are uh, mustard gas chemical weapons that are stockpiled there? Well, based on all the information that I have, uh, he has a lot of weapons. And we're very concerned uh, that he does have those weapons. And we were, right, we were surprised he didn't use those weapons throughout this whole exercise. And, and so can you tell me, like, what, what, so what are we talking about here? Well, because you, I thought he you, made a deal to get rid of weapons of mass destruction. You have, you have mustard gas, uh, you have man pads, uh, you, you have different chemical weapons that he could use, and it could be very serious. Uh, but we have been keeping an eye on that. When I say we, the, the, the NATO and the coalition. Um, but uh, he's, he's a very dangerous person. Uh, I met with him, and um, I, the first thing he said, there were, there were three or four of us from Congress, and we were in Libya. And um, he, he said, you know, why did, why did you attack me? Why did I think President Reagan attack me? I'm a good person. And I came back and I said, well, I don't agree with you. And you were involved in the killing of, of a college student from Baltimore uh, in, in the Pan Am plane. So let's not go down that road. And then he stopped. And then he also uh, knows English, but he made us use interpreter. Uh, and I think all of us who walked away from that meeting felt he was very unstable. And so, uh, let me see if I get this straight. You, through whatever uh, means and methods y you have, and uh, again, you are the ranking member sure. on the Intelligence Committee, you believe that there are large stockpiles of chemical weapons. Um, I'm assuming that there are others in the U.S. government that know this. Do we know where they are, and have we done well, anything <clears throat> to safeguard them? Uh, I, I, I don't want to get into some of that that's classified. What I do want to say is that uh, there's going to be a, a lot of transition uh, that we have to be concerned about, and NATO still has to be involved. Right now, we know two of Gaddafi's sons are still in southern Libya, and they still control br brigades. And if you really look at what happened in Iraq, we don't want to make the same mistakes. You know, what happened in Iraq is that we fired uh, the military who were trained. They became the opposition. Uh, they had weapons, and it caused a serious problem for a long time in Iraq. And we have to make sure that this transition goes well, and it's going to take a lot of time and effort uh, to do this. And we also don't need to create another Iraq. Well, as far as I know, there, there won't be, if, if the rebels win, there is not an army per se, or at least a professional army, uh, left behind. So who guards those stockpiles? I mean, is this important enough uh, for the U.S. or NATO people to put boots on the ground and guard wherever this weaponry is? Well, <clears throat> that's a lot of what intelligence is about and getting the information and making sure uh, that the right moves are made by the people who are going to be there. We should not put boots on the ground. The United States should not boots on the ground. And I praise uh, the president for making that decision. Uh, it should be a coalition and other countries need to be involved in the transition that is going to happen in Libya, including money. Uh, we, we, uh, we just can't, we, we can't be uh, in charge of everything. And, and with other uh, issues that we have, we're still in Afghanistan, um, we need to look at this. But our national security could be at risk here just as any other country. Uh, and we don't want radical terrorists to take control and take advantage of this situation. The National Transitional Government's ambassador to the U.S. just told CNN that one of Gaddafi's sons that has been captured was, quote, hijacked, somehow managed to escape from uh, where he was being uh, guarded by rebels. What does that tell you about the ability of the rebel force to maintain uh, calm to stop looting to prote perhaps protect well, these weaponry stockpiles. It's, it's a wake-up call and just because Gaddafi goes doesn't mean things are going to change right away. Again, let's learn from the lessons of Iraq. There was looting uh, <clears throat> when finally uh, we were able we were able to take control of Iraq. We have to make sure that that doesn't occur and, uh, the, and there will, will be a lot of different extremist groups they're going to try to take advantage of the, of the situation. Um, but, you know, we, we hope that we, along with the, the coalition, 
uh, will have enough intelligence and to be able to make a move to make sure that we, uh, we take control of those weapons of mass destruction because uh, they are there and they could be very dangerous. And that's another thing that you just, Gaddafi's son who escaped. So this, this, uh, this group, the rebel group, is not very sophisticated. So they're going to need help in trying to stand up and bring peace to this government, to the people who eventually want their rights and they want liberty and democracy. Let me ask you about a man from your district, a Matthew Van Dyke. Uh, he's been missing in Libya since March, 31 years old. He's from Baltimore. He was in Libya to write a book about this uprising. Uh, first, please tell us what you know about him. And do you think that this, obviously, I, I think you must be hoping at any rate, uh, if the rest of Tripoli falls, that you could find Matthew Van Dyke? Sure. We were very concerned about Matthew Van Dyke. Uh, a state senator uh, contacted me and said Mrs. Van Dyke was going to call me because of my role on the Intelligence Committee. Uh, our office got involved right away and we attempted to find Matthew. Uh, the last time that he was seen was right around the time that the, the, uh, the coalition started to get involved in, in the battle with Gaddafi. Um, we didn't hear. I was concerned that he might have been, been killed. Uh, uh, and it, as it turned out, we finally, uh, uh, he was finally identified. Uh, and the Hungarian government has been our liaison. We're working with our State Department. And he was in. Now, we know that there are a lot of people in prisons, and there's been one prison where there has a, been a prison break. But that's still a very unstable situation, and we want to make sure that we do whatever we can to bring an American back to the United States who's been in a prison. He went over there as a journalist. Um, but the good news is that we know that he's alive and he's been identified of, uh, of being in prison with, in Libya. I want to thank you so much, okay, Congressman Ruppersberger. We sure. appreciate your time. Hope to talk to you again. Okay, Candy. We are keeping...